Did Cal McNair need to apologize to Deshaun Watson? He did not need to. Oh, but boy, am I glad he did. Okay. Um, he, he didn't need to because here's what we know about management. Sometimes management looks at players like, you a little player. Who are you, little boy? Like, I'm the owner. I run stuff out here. What do I need need to apologize to you for? But I've said this before. Mm. Don't nobody win when the family feuds. Mm -hmm. It's in the best interest of their relationship that he does apologize. I think in life and in sports. Oftentimes, we egotistical, if I can speak uh, generally for men, don't necessarily need love. But what we need is respect. Mm. And what Deshaun Watson made clear that he needed was respect. I don't want you to say you're going to consult me, then not consult me, or consult me in part. Any confusion there. Deshaun Watson needs his respect. So even if Cal McNair were to go on and hire the coach that Deshaun Watson wants, but not amend that previous situation, they still gonna have beef. He's amended this previous situation, but they still need to move forward on one accord. So he didn't need to apologize, but I am glad he did because this is their first step in kind of reconciling that very rocky relationship. Mm. You know, Acho, I agree with you in terms of the apology and what was necessary. I would say that he needed to do that because the two things that you have to have in this relationship that they have with the Texans is you have to have trust and communication. And the only way that you can really build the respect that you need is he has to earn back Deshaun Watson's trust, particularly because he told him one thing and did something else. He told him that he was going to include him in the process. Not necessarily that he was going to let Deshaun Watson pick the general manager and the head coach, but he talked about this being an inclusive process where he was going to bring him in. But when you say that and then you go and do something else, now you have the face of the franchise feeling some kind of way. Cal McNair was right to try and kind of mend defenses so this franchise can get back on track because they need Deshaun Watson to play at a high level. And the only way he is going to play at a high level is if he feels valued by the leaders of the franchise, and that's the management and ownership team. Ah. I'm going to disagree with you guys, and I want to go to the deep end of the pool. Yeah, uh -oh. let's mess our hair up. Let's do it. <laughs> um, yes, he needed to apologize, and maybe for a counterintuitive reason. I learned this level of enlightenment from my therapist. I was whispered this level of enlightenment by my wife when I first met my wife, who would apologize for any and everything. And my therapist finally brought it home to me in terms of why you should apologize in life. And there are two reasons. I had lived a life maybe 38 years long of only apologizing for one reason, if I was wrong. But my therapist and my wife enlightened me, too, you should apologize for two reasons. One, if you're wrong. But two, if the other person felt wronged by your actions or hurt by your actions. See, if you're Cal McNair in this situation, you have come to realize that even though I don't think I did anything wrong, I've hurt someone that I care for. So now you get to a place where Cal McNair, who lives with a different security level and a level of abundance in which he can give that lending hand to someone who he feels he's wronged or hurt. So in this situation, it's funny because in life, this happens all the time. Um, not bragging y'all, but just giving y'all these facts. There was a few years I had a big boat. Some call it a yacht, but whatever. Anyway, I'm out there. I didn't know what the hell yacht culture was. I'm a fish out of water, literally. And one day I'm sitting there on my big boat and this guy just walks on it. I'm like, hey, bro, you know me. I'm like, grab, what's up, homie? Like, I'm looking at him in a different way. And he's like, hey, how you doing? And just walks right on my boat. And we started to break bread because he was not doing anything harmful. We started to break bread. And he started to explain to me about yacht culture, which is an open door policy, which is, hey, since I have it and I know you have it, we can share it. And it took me a deep reflection of how I grew up with limited resources. And I noticed when you don't have a lot, you hold on to it really tight. And I noticed that looking at this yacht culture where everyone has to have an open door policy and you can just walk on someone's boat and grab a brew and say, what's up, buddy? I don't even know you, but how you doing? Versus how I grew up. And I grew up in a situation where it was bars and gates and everything, and we didn't have Jack in there to protect, except us. So the point of this is, this is a place of enlightenment. When you get to that place, and we all, hopefully we'll get there, that you can share with someone else, even if you don't feel like you did them wrong, you can at least experience the pain that they're feeling. Bucky Brooks, <clears throat> once a week, 
Marcellus does something that reminds me how much money he's come across over the course of his life. <laughs> so Always. Early on in the Always. show, Acho, I wrecked my Rolls Royce one time. <laughs> then later on in the show, Acho, I had a couple Bentleys back in a wild day. <laughs> no, no. And now today, I had a big boat. Some call it a yacht. And random dudes will just come, like Marcellus. Why you keep subtly stunting? Okay, I get it. You're rich. I was before rich. Instagram. I had to tell y'all because y'all ain't going to ever see it. <laughs> I love this. Oh, um, so let me take it one more layer. Let's go. It's never positive when pride breaks up talent. Mm. It's never positive when pride breaks up talent. Mm. Tom Brady is about to play in another conference championship game in a route to hopefully for the Buccaneers, a Super Bowl. Now, 50% of the time, when Tom Brady was in New England, he went to the Super Bowl. Ooh. And 66% of the time he went to the Super Bowl, he won the Super Bowl. We give Bill Belichick a pass for not mending his relationship with Tom Brady because y'all already won six. You went there nine times, so you did enough. But if we're being hypercritical, we can look at Belichick and say, hey, bro, why you let your pride get in the way of your connection and the talent of Tom Brady? Mm. Let's talk basketball. So many people watched The Last Dance this, this past uh, summer. And, and we give Jerry Krause, the GM for the Bulls, the late GM for the Bulls, we give him a pass because they won six titles in eight years. But listen to Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, or Phil Jackson tell it that dynasty didn't necessarily need to be broken up. Mm. They probably could have won more. Phil Jackson, 1999, he didn't win, but then he won another three-peat. So they probably could have won more. But because they won so much, we're just kind of like, nah, not a big deal. Ah, Bill Belichick, not a big deal. But Deshaun Watson and the Texans, they haven't won at all yet. So now we're hyper vigilant of this situation. The other reason I will say that I'm glad he did apologize, whether he needed to or not, was because do not let your pride get in the way of a franchise quarterback. We throw that term franchise quarterback around loosely, but there are only probably eight to 12 franchise quarterbacks in the NFL. Texans, y'all have one of them. Don't <clears throat> let pride cost you the one you have. You know, Acho, it's, it's great that you brought up the pride thing because I think sometimes we forget what Deshaun Watson is. If Deshaun Watson was playing anywhere else with the numbers that he put up this year, he would have been the MVP. Yeah. Like, he did an outstanding job of carrying a team that really didn't have the weapons around him. And so I know on the outside, we like to have these fantasy football debates of, oh, where would Deshaun Watson go? Where can he end up? But the Houston Texans have to see that value and find a way to keep that at home. It's hard to find a franchise quarterback when you have one, you want to keep one, because it really changes the plight of the franchise for the next decade. So Cal McNair was right to humble himself, to go to Deshaun Watson, to try and make it right, and now they can go forward together and right the wrongs of this franchise because they need number four on board if they want to entertain any hopes of becoming a Super Bowl contender. I love all this. This is one of my favorite segments I think we ever did on this show because we are really trying to talk through sports and give life lessons. I love this. But we can't be all up here holding hands and <laughs> singing We Are the no. World and, 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 and baking <laughs> apple pies up here. Let me keep it real. Um, I started my, my first take about therapy, and I'm going to go back to therapy because it's interesting. Something comes to mind again when I think of this situation. All right. Apologies don't necessarily mean agreement, just acknowledgement, as we talked about in the first lap. Want to know why I've been engaged four times? Because Acho always says I come up here and try to stunt. Let me talk bad about myself as well. You know why I've been engaged four times, Why, Acho? Marcellus? Because <laughs> I only apologize for one reason, when I was wrong. But I never was apologizing when I was hurting people through the process. But I made it through that process, and now I'm a happy man. But... My, my understandings of life also come from my upbringing. And I wasn't a pastor's son like you, Acho, but my great-grandmama kept me in the church. And there was one Bible verse that I remember that comes to mind that I applies to this I swear if you say if you're hot or cold, I will spew you. I swear if you say that. Acho, no me. It can't, be, it can't be your only verse. Hey, hey, it can't be your I only verse. I was not you gotta have more. tired up in that you church. You got to have more. Ma, we can't go home and watch Dukes of Hazard. I got to be up in church every weekend. All right, here's the thing. Nope, I got another one. I knew Acho was going to push back because I only know two verses. Here's the third verse for you. Another one. Um, if your enemy is hungry, mm. feed mm -hmm. him. If he is thirsty, Talk to himself. give him something to drink. Well, For by doing this, ah, you will heap fiery coals 
on his head. Not the coals. On coals. And these coals are coals of shame. That's what it is. My therapist Ooh. always talks about how shame is an everlasting feeling. It will haunt you forever. Every time you see somebody and you feel ashamed around them, you always in your head are replaying that, even if they moved on from it. I bring all that up to say, look, Deshaun Watson, look, Cal McNair, as Acho said, don't let this pride get in the way. Let's talk about a situation where we don't want to go to war. We don't want to go to a situation where we disturb the greatness we're trying to build together. I love what's happening now because Cal McNair had to swallow a little pride to come publicly and say that he apologized to his disgruntled but star franchise quarterback. Now, Bucky, you notice you've been on the show for two straight blocks, wow. and I ain't take no jabs at you, Bucky. Uh -oh. Now, don't think I forgot uh -oh. the person you are. I just acknowledge every now and then there are moments to trump the person. Bucky Brooks, happy birthday, happy my birthday. guy. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, my, my dog, happy Bucky birthday. Brooks. Happy birthday. How old is he? Uh, hey, I ain't gonna put How old are you, Bucky? How old are you, Bucky? Five, oh, oh, the big 5-0. Oh, oh, don't look a day over 35. Shoo. Yes, he does. <laughs> but, uh, hey, let's go cut the locks off one of these clubs and break in and have a party tonight. Can we do that, hey, Bucky? Hey, can you loan him either the Rolls Royce, the <laughs> Bentley, or the yacht? Hold the big boat. Hold the big boat. <laughs> hey, party on my big boat that I don't have anymore. Let's do it, guys. Happy birthday, Big Buck. We love you, brother.